Chelsea Football Club, you have a massive job on your hands. Manchester United versus Chelsea, the match preview and Enzo Maresca's press conference getting broken down over here. We haven't won there since 2013. This is going to be one of the best opportunities that we are going to have to go to Old Trafford, absolutely step on their head top and get three points. I'm in Morocco, you're still getting the content, so there's no excuse for you not to hit that like button right now because it is super late and I'm still recording to make sure you get that match preview that you all deserve because you all watch consistently and I absolutely love it. So, a thousand likes, subscribe to the channel if you're new and in the comments below, give me your score prediction. I'm going with 3-1 Chelsea because we don't keep clean sheets. Let's not be silly. Let's get started with Enzo Maresca's press conference. It is an absolutely juicy one today because he talks about Enzo Fernandez, talks about his preferred midfield options, he talks about Malo Gusto and why he's pivotal and he also talks about how everyone deserves to play and I'm really getting tired of hearing that because in reality life is not fair not everyone deserves to play okay let's get into it so Enzo Maresca was sitting in a press conference and he openly said look the game we're going to play at Manchester United is a big one he was made aware that we haven't won there since 2013 and he said ah but it's a hard game for everyone, not only for us. He also said that everyone is fit apart from Jadon Sancho, who was sick this week, and said that we need to be on the top of our game to make sure we win this. A few things that you need to know. Manchester United have hired Ruben Amorim, but he's doing his notice periods as if my man is me working at Sainsbury's when I was younger and I handed in my notice. Absolutely wild that a football manager has to hand in a 28 days notice and his club just aren't willing to say, listen, one million, hold that. Let me buy him out of 28 days. Manchester United moving like absolute broke boys. That's all I'm going to tell you, innit? But the reality is here, we need to go to Old Trafford and we need to make a marker. Enzo Maresca understands this. I understand this. You need to understand this. Let's move on with the next question. He was asked if Chelsea were not prepared to win and were willing to sacrifice the game at Newcastle just to win this one. And he said, no, we always prepare to win. We are going into every game, ensuring that we win. The reason he rotated is because everyone deserves to play. I hate that mentality. Look, good teams don't have that kind of mentality. I know people are gonna say, oh my God, there's a lot of games. Alex, look, there's just a lot of games and we have to give people the minutes. I don't care. Arsenal play Bukayo Saka most of the games. They play Kai Havertz most of the game. They play their most important players in most of the games. They play on a Saturday, they play on a Wednesday, and they play on a Saturday or a Sunday again. They will play three games in eight days if needed. We could have allowed Malo Gusto, Caicedo, and Cole Palmer or Noni Madweke to start that game. I do not believe in this. We need to make sure everyone stays happy and give them the minutes. If this becomes a problem, sell him. I don't need Axel de Sassi in the squad. He doesn't offer anything and doesn't play in his best position to offer anything. Axel de Sassi is the fifth choice centre back. We shouldn't have five choices of centre back. And we all know, someone said to me, oh, you have one rule for de Sassi and another rule for Enzo. Enzo is the backup to the starters. De Sassi is fifth choice centre back in a position where there's two positions positions that start, meaning two players have to get injured before the Sassy plays in his rightful position. Why on earth is the Sassy playing at right back? I don't like this mentality. Then Keenan Jewsbury Hall. Keenan Jewsbury Hall, he said, we tried something new there. We wanted to see if we can experiment and get more control and more balance. With Keenan Jewsbury Hall at right wing, what are you doing? Honestly, you're taking a player out of his position, putting him somewhere so you can experiment. Once you experiment and it goes wrong, wear out the competition, he looks like a Muppet. He's got people like me on his neck for saying he just looks out of his depth and now his confidence is on the floor. Reality is, it's not Keenan's fault. It really is not Kieran Jewsby Hall's fault because the reality is he's a centre midfielder, not a right winger. You're literally leaving him out there exposed. I don't agree with this whole mentality. Everyone has to play. Life is unfair sometimes. I want to play for Chelsea. Can I get a few minutes? No, I don't. Oi, the media is a little bit cheeky with this one because they said, oh, a video has gone viral that you were very frustrated with Enzo Fernandez. And he goes, what video went viral? He goes, there was one where he tried to switch the play and as soon as I saw that, I noticed Maresco storm off as well. He said, I'm frustrated with all of them. I was frustrated with all of them. And he also reiterated, I have the utmost confidence in Enzo Fernandez. I believe he's a great player and he literally cuddled him, bro. Like virtually, he gave him a cuddle without Enzo being there. He really, really spoke positively about him. But he reiterated it again. 
He said, look, Enzo's not playing. And the reason he's not playing is because at this moment in time, I believe in Lavia and Caicedo in that midfield. He went on to say, this doesn't mean in the future he won't play games. He will play games. We have got a lot of games and he will play a pivotal role. I believe in this player. And he also went on and said, he basically explained that thing that I always call horses for courses. Some games you need Enzo Fernandez. Some games you need Lavia and Caicedo. And he also went on to say, in some games, we're going to play a box. We're going to play Lavia, Caicedo, Juan and Cole Palmer. It doesn't mean Juan's not playing. It doesn't mean Enzo is not playing anymore. It's a squad game. And for me, this is very interesting because how long is Enzo Fernandez going to be happy with being a backup for Lavia and Caicedo? Don't get me wrong. A lot of you say I'm on the payroll for Joao Felix and Enzo Fernandez because I, I think a lot of people's criticism of him is unfair. However, neither one deserves to start. Neither player deserves to start. And I will have explained that in the video below. I will give you a link at the end. You can go and watch that. Neither player deserves to start ahead of Cole Palmer, Lavia or Caicedo. All three have been significantly better and deserve to start. But this is a squad game. There will be games where there needs to be load management. You need to change a few things. There's an off day. Someone's having a bad day in the office. There will be changes. And I think Lab, uh, Caicedo and Lavia having a backup as Enzo is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. He also said uh, Santos going alone was one of the best things for him at this moment in time. Because people are already asking him about Andre Santos. Santos has gone away, got five goals in eight league on games. And he said he has to go and play. And if he continues this way, he'll be coming back. And for me, this is the best way to put it. Put the ball in Santos's court. He needs to smash it to the point he can't be ignored. He needs to get Brazil call-ups. He needs to play for Brazil. He needs to be so good that big clubs want to come at him. And we will be there. We will be there. I will be tweeting Chelsea. Do not sell Santos. Do not sell Santos. I will tell you now. We as Kafka's view nation boys. We will not allow Santos to get sold from this club. We will riot virtually. Yeah, virtually, not literally, don't go there. No one needs to get arrested for nothing. But we will virtually on Twitter riot. We will explain to them you cannot sell Andre Santos for no profit. So the reality is, if Santos comes back, Enzo needs to fix up. Because we are going to have four amazing midfielders for two positions. And one of them is going to be unhappy. It is what it is. Let's move on to the next story. Enzo Maresca definitely watches the Gaff Guys, by the way. I'm certain of it. Because he spoke about it today in his press conference about what I keep talking about. Why we need the midfield two of Lavia and Caicedo. How they give us the physicality, the so uh, solidity and more importantly... They give us something that we lack, defense in transition. They also give us on-ball ability because Lavia playing out the back is absolutely phenomenal. Why? Because he can spray a pass, but more importantly, he can receive it, beat a man off a dribble and just create attacks. Very brave and illustrious in his passing. He really expresses himself and I love players like that. Caicedo, he's just getting better with age, man. Like genuinely... The player that came to England initially and played for Brighton, the player that he was at Brighton when we signed him, I feel like he's jumped two levels now. I genuinely believe he's one of the best midfielders in the league in doing what he does. That he's one of the best number eights. Yes, he's cost the money, but now he's starting to show us why. However, there's one person he spoke about that was he, he was very complimentary of, Malo Gusto. So the question was, is Gusto going to be the left back now or is Reese going to be the left back now? Because... Kukurea played midweek and he said Gusto does something that is so nice and he believes he's doing amazing because he's like Gusto sometimes plays CDM sometimes he moves forward and goes into the 10 role sometimes he plays left back sometimes he plays center back even at times during the game he gives him tactical flexibility and that gives makes us more solid and we need to stop games from being basketball games because he believes that's why the 10 minutes against Newcastle really screwed us over. This is good insight, man. This is the type of insight that I want to hear from managers. And this is the type of insight I want to hear in press conferences. I want managers to talk openly and freely and express themselves. But that's just my personal opinion. Let me know in the comments below if you believe Gusto is good at left back the way Maresca does. Personally, I would actually go with Kukurea and let Kukurea do the Gusto role. The final thing that he spoke about today was Nico Jackson. Listen, how times have changed. Do you not remember midway through last year, Nicholas Jackson was literally on everybody's like, we don't like Nicholas Jackson list. 
because everybody convinced themselves he ain't good enough, he can't finish, he doesn't offer enough, we need to do more. All of a sudden, this man's become undroppable. All of a sudden, Nkunku, who was meant to be the savior, because that's what we were told consistently, right? He's gonna come in, he's gonna be the savior. The reason Pocha's season is not going well is he lost Nkunku for the year. If Nkunku played, we would have been scoring more goals. Well, it looks like Nkunku's not gonna get a look in anytime soon because Jackson's become so good. And the way Moresca's explaining it is absolutely brilliant. He says, look, he can score goals, he can link up play. He works hard off the ball. He goes, but there are areas of improvement, and I love that. He's keeping him humble, and he's keeping him on his toes. He said he needs to, when he drops deep in the defensive shape, understand what he needs to do in the next phase of that. And for me, that was very interesting. It really adds another layer to the way like teams develop and will play against us. And he needs to learn when, when to press and when not to press and when to give everyone else behind him a break so there's, he's the trigger for the press. It's going to be insightful. The team I think we're going to go with, and I think hopefully we win 3-1 at Manchester United, is Robert Sanchez in goal. Jurgensen does not deserve to start after the performance against Newcastle, in my personal opinion. Sanchez starts, even though he hasn't been great this year either. Rhys James, three games in a row. Hey, I can't believe I'm saying that. Back to easy. Fofana, Colwell, pick themselves. Left back, I would go with Kukurea. I genuinely would go with Kukurea. I've got a feeling we're going to go with Malo Gusto. I don't like it, but we will. And I think we just need that balance with Kukurea. I, but I think the way he spoke about Gusto, Gusto got the midweek off, Gusto is going to be playing. Midfield two, Lavia Caicedo. No, no debate, no Enzo Fernandez in this one, unless he's coming off the bench. 10, Cole Palmer. Brother, you're going back to Manchester. I need you to dunk on him one more time. Right wing, I personally would go with Pedro Neto. Genuinely, I would go with Pedro Neto. I think he gives us danger, he gives us threat, aggressiveness. He's just a complete player in that area with his creativity. On the left, I would be a little bit audacious. I would play Mikhailo Mudrik. I genuinely believe Mudrik played well enough against Newcastle. He played well against Bauk uh, in Greece. I think this is the one now where you let him loose. Noni might be unhappy because Noni wants to play. I think he's earned a start. Up top, Nicholas Jackson. Let me know your teams in the comments below. Hit that like button, subscribe, and here's more Kafka's You where I talk about the treatment of Joao Felix and uh, Enzo Fernandez. I am not on the payroll. I tell you how it is. I want us to be objective and I want us to be realistic. A lot of people clearly ain't doing it. Little bit of a rant. Even a cat was listening to the video. Yes, go check it out. Bye.